So 4, 1 is uh, related rates. Um, as I drop a stone into a still pond, right, the ripple is changing. So the area is changing at the same time as the radius or, right? So, so related, how is one thing changes, changing with respect to, to how another thing is changing, related rates. For two, we're doing today uh, absolute min and max. Very, very easy. 4.3 is horrible. First and second derivative test. 4.6 is optimization. So I'm, I'm working at a, a, a company and we make boxes, right? So I want to optimize, right, the price of the, I want to minimize the price of the cardboard I'm using, right? Does that make sense? I want to I waste as little cardboard as I can when I'm cutting boxes to fold, you know? So say again. Exactly, exactly. Uh, if you think about it, if I, if I sell products, if, if I sell a product, like say I sell uh, bicycles, right? And as I s start making more and more bicycles because they're in demand and, and, and people want to buy them, right? There's some point where I start making too many bicycles and I lose some demand, which means I lose money, right? Is that making sense? So we're trying to find that optimum, that high point, right? Which is why we're talking about mins and maxes of my profit curve. If you have it, any of you taken any economics yet? Economics, yeah. So just trying to find the maximum production level, right? The the uh, sorry, a minimum production level where I make the most money, right? Doesn't that make sense? So optimization, and then finally uh, four point eight is antiderivatives. So if I give you the derivative, can you get me back to the original function? And of course, they start very easy, right? If I gave you cosine, what's the original function? If cosine is the derivative, what's the original function? Sine of x, right. So, so, so some of them will be that easy. Some will be a couple pages long. We'll get a list of maybe 10 or 12 processes for antiderivatives. And then in, in Calc 2, you'll, fi you'll finish that list with another 10 or 12 processes, right? Until we finally get to something we cannot take the anti, we cannot find the original function for, and then we do something even more complicated in Calc 2. But that's our, that's our chapter four outline here. And I wanna start here. It's kind of nice, I, I can do any of these sections at any time. And so that's, that's why I'm picking this one. I think it's the easiest of all of them. So here is our, sorry, so what we're talking about is 4.2 uh, absolute minimax. So the theorem is uh, if f is a continuous function if f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, right, so um, then f has an absolute high point and an absolute low point. Of course, the high point being the maximum, the highest y value, right? And uh, the low point being the minimum, right? So for example, cosine uh, is continuous uh, on zero to pi, right? Yes, you agree? And we obviously know the high point is 0, 1, so 1 is the highest value there. And at pi, right, we've got a height of minus 1, and that's our low point. But I need the function to be continuous on everything, including the endpoints, okay? 
what is not obvious is that where am I going to get the high points from? Where am I going to get the low point from? Where am I, uh, right? And so that is the second half of this theory. Uh, the max and min uh, will occur on f of a, f of b, or f of c with C being a critical value of F prime. We're getting bombarded. Can anybody else not stand how many emails we get here at Montgomery College? Is anybody feeling that too? It's just overwhelming, right? F of A, F of B. So, so meaning, what am I saying there? That maximum or minimum could occur on the endpoints of the interval, or they could occur on a, a, a critical value of the derivative. And that would make more sense once I start talking about some other functions, okay? So I, I guess the interesting thing here is, and I'm not going to prove this to you, but it should kind of make sense. But what I will do is I'll say, well, let me restrict something. Let me take something out of my demands here. And I said what? Two things. F is continuous, and it's continuous on a closed interval, right? So I could take the continuity away and show you that it fails. I won't get a min or max. Or I could take an endpoint away and show you that it fails, right? So, so pretty obvious. Um, let's, let's say uh, F is continuous. Right? Like uh, f of x is cosine of x. But let me take away uh, the open interval, uh, sorry, the closed interval. Let me take away 0 from my, from my interval. Right? And so now what's happening at 0, right, is I, that height of 1 doesn't exist anymore. Right? But can you see, I, I can get to the height of uh, 0.9 and 0.99 and 0.9999, yes? But I'll never get to 1 now. Yes, I'll have a limit of 1, but I because I took off that, that closed piece of uh, at 0, right? Is that making sense? As, uh, yeah, close to 1, right? Because remember, we're thinking about a y value uh, for the height. I'm trying to find the highest point. Right? So I'm getting really close to one, but I'll never get there. So no maximum, yes. It looks like all negative 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 negative. Yeah. And then you want me to take the pi over four off? You want me to take you want me to go from negative pi over four open to pi? Yeah. yeah. So now I do have a maximum. Right? I do I do have a maximum point there. Right? And I, and I do have, but where is the, where is the piece going to come from? It's not going to come from the endpoints anymore, right? So on, now I'm not saying every time I take these restrictions off, I don't get a max. On the one that you're describing, Jill, I do get a max and a min. But what we're saying is if we have those restrictions, continuity and closed endpoints, we have to get a max and a min. And this one, uh, where do we get our critical from? We get it from the derivative. So f prime of x is what? If the function is cosine, what's the derivative? Negative sine of x. And when does negative sine of x uh, equal, sorry, where's sine of x? Oh, yeah. Uh, where does negative sine of x equal 0? At 0. So, so, so uh, f prime of 0 is 0. Right, so f of zero is cos of zero is one. That's that. In this case, that's where my max is coming from. And again, I'm leaving out a little detail, but you can clearly see I get the high point of the cosine curve at zero. But where did I get the critical? Where did I get the x value from? From the derivative in that case. It's either going to come from the endpoints or from the critical values of the derivative. Good, let me take uh, uh, the continuity off.
right? Let's see what happens if I take the continuity off. Um, so um, let's say f of x is the uh, absolute value of x uh, for x not equal to zero. And it's one for x equals zero. Right, so we, we already know what this looks like, but at zero, I'm not using the absolute value function. I'm using the, just the height of one. So, so here I've restricted, um, let's say I restrict from minus one to one, right? Remember, I have to restrict on a closed interval to, get, to guarantee myself the max. It's just what I'm telling you. But I took away the continuity. I have to have continuity as well. So this function has no what? Absolutely. No minimum, right? It definitely have a maximum of one. In fact, it occurs three times, right? It occurs at negative one, it occurs at zero, it occurs at one, and that's fine, but there's no, there's no minimum here, right? Because as I'm walking down this hill, right, I'm getting really close to zero, but I'll never get there. In fact, if I try to go there, what happens? I fall through the hole, and then I fall on the ground and break my skull, die, and class is over. <laughs> Go ahead, walk closer, Robert, walk. <laughs> so, um, so that's enough theory. Let's, let's just jump into a problem real quick, right? And I like all of the problems in this section so they're all kind of becoming uh, uh, su suggested. Um, so I definitely like up to 71. So suggested problems in 4.2, 1 to 71, right? All right, let's grab one. Mm. My favorite, my favorite one is. Uh, where the heck is it? <laughs> oh, here we go. Well, the trig, the trig ones are are definitely good too. Uh, make sure you do all the trig ones. Um, I can't, I think they, they may have changed the book. Sorry. Uh, let's do 60. It's not my favorite one, but I'll do, I'll do, the one I put on your last quiz was my favorite one. Oh, I can, I can, I can remember that one. I'll do that one. So I had what, f of x is equal to x times square roots of 4 minus x squared, right? And I, I had asked you all to definitely draw that. And I think we had something like this. Look kind of familiar on that last quiz? Yep. So, so let's, let's restrict this from minus 2 to 2. And let's, let's find the absolute min and max using the process that I'm about to outline. Okay, so obviously we can see where the max is, right? Yes, that's the high point, right, of the curve, and we can see where the min is, and we can see where the endpoints are. And remember, I have to check the endpoints. So again, I'm using the, the geometry to help me with the calculus. So I'm drawing the graph. I'm looking at where I can see the high points and low points and the endpoints. And then I'm gonna just I'm gonna use the calculus to show the answers now, right? So step one is uh, find f of a and f of b. So we want to find f of plus or minus two, right? So that's plus or minus two times square roots of four minus 
plus or minus 2 squared. I can do this one all at the same time. I don't have to do them separately because I know when I square that plus or minus 2, I'm just going to get 4, right? So I, I know I get 0 in both cases here. Uh, if, if you don't like that, you don't have to do them at the same time. Sometimes you can't, uh, but then just do them one at a time. Find me f of a, which is 0. Find me f of b, which is 0, right? So I, have, I've, I actually found f of minus 2 is 0, and f of 2 is 0. That is still a possible maximum or a possible minimum. It's a, it's a possible maximum if all my other values I check give me negative numbers. It's a possible minimum if all the other values I check give me positive numbers. But I already know it's not going to be f of 2 or f of negative 2, right? Because remember what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the highest point and the lowest point. And, and, and those endpoints are not it. How are we doing here? Are we okay? This is not difficult, am I right? I'm, you still have to, you don't have to understand everything I say. Uh, and, and I, many times, would leave the classroom and go, well, what the hell happened today, right? So, so you still have to go back, read the book, right? Go, go find your favorite person to explain calculus on YouTube, right? Um, oh, do you, know, do you know the game Wordle? Do you know Nerdle? Nerdle. Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, uh, all right, next process here, right? Find f prime. So this was step one, yes? Step two, find f prime. And of course, I, I mean the pretty one, right? Perfectly factored. Uh, so let's see, function is x times square roots of 1, 4 minus x squared. So my first function is x, the derivative is 1. Again, you're not copying me here, you're racing me, right? You're seeing if you can get this derivative done before me. Second function is square root of 4 minus x squared, and derivative is minus 2x over 2 square roots of 4 minus x squared. I, d I do like to simplify that as early as I can before I go into my loop. My, my girlfriend borrowed my tablet, and now I got all these weird pens in here. And she changed the size on all the writing. Um, so what do I get? I get, uh, I get square root of 4 minus x squared minus x squared over square roots of 4 minus x squared. This is my derivative so far. And I, I know it's not to where I want. One, because I can, uh, I guess this one in the, in the back of the book won't have the derivative written out. Right, but you know how to check your derivatives on Desmos. So, but I want to make it easier for me to get uh, critical values. So I got to get this this denominator, right? So I'm going to multiply this first term by the LCD over itself, or better yet, what's missing from the LCD over itself. So now look at what I have upstairs. I have four minus x squared minus x squared. over the square roots of 4 minus x squared. So simplifying a little more, I get 4 minus 2x squared all over square roots of 4 minus x squared. Did, we, did we, anyone else get that? Yeah? Anyone else? Yeah? Nice, Daniel, nice. Oh, question. Yes, so uh, square root times itself, right? Uh, are you asking where I circled, or are you asking about this piece? Yeah, this one. Yeah. Uh, so remember, I want an LCD. So I'm looking at one denominator. It's square root of 4 minus x squared. The other denominator is 1. So obviously, I know the LCD is the, is the square root of 4 minus x squared. So I take the piece that's missing the LCD, and I multiply top and bottom by the same thing, right? So I, I multiply by 1, right? So this, this, this piece that I'm multiplying by here by is 1. 
And now I got the same LCD for both, so I can put them all over one LCD, right? And then the, the rad times the rad just gives me the inside, right? Yep. Abigail? Yes. Yes, because uh, I did this part of my loop. Uh, my pens are, I don't know what she did to my pens, but um, I did this part of the loop, and I needed that x times the x to get the x squared, right? All right, there's my derivative. Um, I want to find the critical values. And what are, what are the critical values? It's when f prime of x equals 0 or the numerator equals zero, right? Or when f prime of x does not exist, or the denominator equals zero. Right, so, so that right away, that's something you're putting on your, your, your formula sheet, right? Because if, if I say find criticals and you don't remember, Right? You got to know what the things mean. So put them down. It's a lot to remember. That's why I give you a formula sheet. If you didn't have it on there and you said to me, uh, uh, Robert, I forget how to find criticals. I'm not going to say tough. I'll say something like, it's when the derivative equals what? I'll try and give you a hint, but I'd rather you put it on your formula sheet. Okay, when does my numerator equal zero? So f prime of x equals zero implies 4 minus 2x squared equals 0, or what, x squared is 1 half, is that right? Or x equals plus or minus square root of 1 half, and of course from trig we remember that as rad 2 over 2. Either one is fine. Square root of, square root of 1 half is rad 2 over 2, right? Remember doing that in trig all the time? Yes, question? Oh, geez, geez, sorry, thank you. No, no, thank you. I'm. That's a, that I should be fired for that. Uh, x squared is two, right? <laughs> so x equals plus or minus square root of two. About one four, one point four, right? Thank you, do it. Um, so, uh, let's keep going though. F prime of X does not exist implies square root of four minus X squared equals zero. That means what? Square both sides. Four minus X squared equals zero. That means X squared equals four or X equals plus or minus two. So I've got four critical values, two of which I don't care about. Which two don't I care about? Plus or minus two. So, okay, Kelvin. Where where are you? Oh, okay. So I already know. So the endpoints gave me criticals, right? Yes. The endpoints gave me criticals. But I already know the heights at the endpoints. The heights at the endpoints are zero. So I don't have to check them again. I already know f of 2 and f of minus 2. You with me? So I only want the criticals. The only criticals that matter uh, are on the open interval. I don't care about the endpoints again. If I get a, a, a critical value that is also an endpoint, ignore it. Because what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find the absolute max. Is it going to happen at x is 2? No. Is it going to happen at x is minus 2? No. I already know those heights are 0. It's going to happen here, right? It's going to happen here at rad 2 and then minus rad 2. Okay, almost done. Critical values are the 
the, the max or min could happen at the endpoints or at the criticals. So, but the idea again is find the heights of the endpoints, find the derivative, find the criticals, find the heights at the criticals. Decide which one is the highest. Decide which one is the lowest. Right? Question? Okay. Would you fix the heights as, as they change? Exactly. From the original or from the Good. So the criticals gave me tops of the hills or bottoms of the valleys. The only way to find the height of the top of that hill is to go to the original function. Yeah. So we want to find uh, find f of c, right? So f of uh, plus or minus square root of 2. And again, this is one that I can do all at once. So I will. Oh, it's a 4, right? Uh, so what do I get here? I get 4 minus 2. So I know f at rad 2 is 2, and f at minus rad 2 is negative 2. I want it all checked on Desmos, right? All of it on Desmos. Everything I just did before I make my conclusion, because I want to make sure my points are correct, right? So to Desmos. I think everybody's here. Yeah, everybody's here today. Good morning, everyone. Hey, Calista. The endpoints. Uh, so their domain, right? Their x values. I want y values. I want what's the highest I climb on this hill, right? I like them better as a point. So, and you'll see when I put my summary in, the book will usually just give a y value. I like to give a point, but um, so I had original function f of x uh, equals x square roots of 4 minus x squared. That was from our last quiz. I found four points. I found uh, negative 2 comma 0, right? That's my end point. Is that a high, the highest point? No, right? I found 2 comma 0. And that's my process, find the heights of the endpoints first. I found the derivative, and, and I'm just going to remind you how I'm checking my derivative, right? So let me, let me hide these things first. I'm going to have Desmos do my derivative. And then I'm going to type in my own derivative. What was it, 4 minus x squared? All over square roots of 4 minus x squared, right? Oops, sorry. What did I do? 4 minus 2x squared, right? Yes? And, and what am I doing to make sure I have my derivative right? I'm just showing that those two graphs match, right? Once again, my original function, I found the heights at the endpoints. I also found the heights, I found critical values of plus or minus square root of 2, right? So at minus square root of 2, comma, what did I get, 2? Oh, no, negative 2, right? There's my low point. And then I found the other one, I found square root of 2, comma 2 and that's my high point if, if this graph is uh, me making money if this graph represents me making money right I'm making most of my how do I maximize my profit how do I minimize my cost right? that kind of thing so you need to be able to find the high points and low points of the graph. And we used to do it in pre-cal, we just said, hey, here's a graph, what's the high point, right? But now we're realizing 
you find derivatives, you find criticals, and that's where your high points are. Or endpoints, right? It's kind of sad if this is my business model, and that would be my maximum. change and as I'm building things, as inflation is going, as shipping is becoming an issue, where should I be producing? How many bicycles should I be making to maximize my profit, right? Um, it is a, a business side of it when we first start talking about it, but you can also see it in, in, um, in medicines at what amount of uh, this particular medicine will uh, the heart rate be perfect, right? That kind of thing. Or high blood pressure, right? And what amount of medicine will, will the blood pressure be perfect, right? And so probably a minimum, right? So finally, conclusion. Uh, F has a max at uh, rad 2, 2, and a min at negative rad 2, negative 2. Right, so after I do my check, then I can write up my conclusion. I don't want to write it up and have it be wrong, incorrect, right? I mean, and that's okay. If you if you written everything up and you go check it and then you know you can just cross out things on your test or your quiz you don't have to erase them you don't right what do you think not too bad right good so I mean we've got all the theory down we've got a process down we know how to check it if you practice, there's no way you get this problem wrong on the on the chapter four test. No way. You got a couple of example problems. You look at all my old chapter four tests, all my old final exams, right? That's what we're gonna start to be working on now. Chapter four tests, final exams, right? Then chapter five tests, final exams, right? Um, so, say again? Uh, no, I'm saying when you look at the chapter four material, it would have either existed on the chapter four test or on the final exam. So some semesters I give chapter tests. If I'm three days a week, I give chapter tests. If I'm two days a, uh, if two days a week, I give a midterm and a final only. So, um, so again, you're looking at all the chapter four tests, every single problem I did with absolute min and max. Right? And you'll see there's not many. Definitely not many. Let's do another problem. Hopefully you're you're get, catching on to me a little bit, right? You're catching on to me. You 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 I asked you to do this. Take your chapter two exam and look at all my old chapter two exams and tell me, are they similar? And the answer is yes. Right? When you're in it, it doesn't seem it seems like it's impossible. But I'm not trying to trick you. If you can learn how to do these things, you should move on. You don't have to take the class again. If it takes you all the way to the final exam to learn it, fine. I'm not worried about you passing with a C. I'm worried about you taking Calc 2 with a C in Calc 1, right? I don't, I don't think you're ready, but I can't stop you, and I'm not going to force you to take the course again if you get a C. But you're going to, before you take Calc 2, you're going to review all your derivatives and review all your antiderivatives, right? Okay, let's do another problem here. Uh, I like number... Which one? I like, I like 60. So this is 4.2 number 60, and I have 
y equals the ln of x squared plus x plus 1 on minus 1 to 1. I'm kind of worried about ln though, right? If you, if you think of the original ln function, there's definitely going to be an issue uh, possibly on the endpoint here. Uh, but let's, let's look at this function on Desmos. Remember, if I give you a function and you don't know what it looks like, or you do know what it looks like, still go into Desmos, right? So f of x is the ln of x squared plus x plus 1. Cool. No problem, right? And I want to look at the restriction from minus 1 to 1. My, my restriction is not saying the endpoints in the, are included, but it's just Desmos can't handle it. But can you see where the low point is? When you see the, hell yeah, right? And is it on an endpoint or is it on a critical? Critical, and how do I know it's on a critical? Because if I was skiing there, right? If I was skiing there, my slope of my ski would be zero. That's where the numerator of the derivative is zero, right? And I can also see my high point on the endpoint, right? Right? Easy. Very, very easy. Too easy. It's insulting, right? Good. Let's find. Let's find the values of the endpoints. So f of minus one uh, is the ln of negative one squared plus a negative one plus a one. So it's ln of one, which is zero, right? Yeah? Good. f of 1 is the ln of 1 squared plus 1 plus 1, so ln of 3. And, and that is obviously my high point. Am I right? This is easy? Yeah. Do it. Do it. What's up? No, you got it? Good. I, I'm going right away to my Desmos. I'm just going to put those points in real quick. So negative 1 comma 0, sweet, and then 1 comma ln of 3, right? Nice. Good. Let's do, what's that say again? Oh, that's what we have to find still, right? I know it's there. I can see it, right? But what's my process? Find the values of the endpoints. Find the derivative. So the inside is what? x squared plus x plus 1? So, so what do I get? I, remember, uh, this is on my formula sheet. If y equals the ln of u, y prime is u prime over u, right? That's on my formula sheet, right? So I know I get what? 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. Is that too quick? Good. What's, the, what's my function again? It's ln of x squared plus x plus 1. Now all I need to do is find... Where do my highlighters go, damn it? I find u, and then I find u prime, and I plug it in. Right, do you see it? Yes, nice. So, I got a critical value. Uh, so, f prime of x equals 0 implies the numerator is 0. So, that's x is one, uh, negative 1 half, right? And f prime of x does not exist implies x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0, but that that doesn't happen. Right? x squared plus x plus 1 is a 
a parabola with very, very special complex roots. Is that true? So no roots, right? But we know it has two roots, but they're complex. Good. So I found my critical value of minus one half. Yes? There's my only critical value. Remember, minus one half has to belong to the open interval from minus one to one, does it? Yeah, right? Good. So now I just have to find f of minus one half, which is the ln of minus one half squared plus a minus one half plus a one. And notice I'm putting in, plugging in with empty parens there, just because I'm worried about those signs, S-I-G-Ns, right? Into F. I got the, the, the critical from F prime. To get the height, I go to the, the original function. So you split up the numerator and get the denominator. Uh, the exactly. Numerator is zero, and denominator is zero. Yeah. So ln of one fourth plus one half, what's that, the ln of three fourths? Yeah. Uh, so I had to point uh, minus one half, comma, ln of three fourths, right? And there's my low point. Not bad, right? Question, Callista. Uh, where, where, the critical? Okay, so uh, the numerator is two x plus one, right? Okay, so I got to set, I got to set that two x plus one equal to zero, right? So the the one moves over to the other side becomes a negative, and then divide by two, negative one half. You see it? Oh, when I when I once I find it and plug it in here, you're saying? Yeah, because remember it's it it's originally it's x squared plus x plus one. So I'm just plugging in for the x's. Yes, plus I did this in my head. Minus one half plus one is one half. Yeah, yeah. Question, Daniel. So then if there's only one like one zero, that means one of the points it could yes so we 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 can't we can't force things in life so eventually by the time you're 54 years old you'll you'll realize that but uh hopefully sooner but you got to let things happen right so i could get three criticals and none of them give me absolute min or max right i'll always have two endpoints because the theorem says i have to have two endpoints right so so but let what happens happen and then summarize it right so, uh, f has a max at uh, f of 2 equal to, help me, I forget, uh, ln of 3, right? And then f has a min at f of minus 1 half, and that height I got was ln of 3 fourths. Custom. Uh, no, natural log of three is a, is a number, right? Um, so uh, we've been using our calculator. We used to use something called a slide rule to to talk about what ln of three is in terms of a decimal. But it's ln of three. It's a number. I mean, I mean, we certainly can, and we can use Desmos to do it, right? Uh, ln of three. It's about one point one. Uh, ln of three. I always want exact answers. I'd rather have uh, uh, pi over six, right, than, what is it, point four, point six something, whatever, what is pi over six, I forget. Don't tell me, pi divided by six. 
0.5 something. I, I, so I'd rather have pi over 6. It's not bad, is it? This section. Not too bad at all. Um, let's do one trig and then quit for today. Let's do one with trig and then go have a cup of coffee or something. Okay? Yes, Kelvin. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's f of 1, not f of 2. I was doing the other problem still. Thank you. Right, the endpoint is uh, either minus 1 or 1, right? And we got the max at, at, the, at, at x is 1. Thank you, Kelvin. Uh, let's see. Let's do 39. Anybody recognize 39 there? Um, it was. It was a little different than this one, but uh, again, I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm trying to think about where are we going, and you'll see at the end, I, I'll give you any function I want. You should be able to find a derivative or an antiderivative of it. So these things, these functions will keep showing up. So this is number uh, 39. We're officially halfway through, by the way. We're in week eight. With, uh, with Thanksgiving and finals week, we're here for 16 weeks in a row. So we're officially at the halfway point, which is pretty sweet, right? What's that? Finals, uh, first week in December, second week in December. So 39, sorry, f of x is 2 cos theta plus sine squared theta. I use, I, theta is the same thing as x for me, right? You agree with that? It's, theta is just trying to really make sure that you think of it as an angle, but it doesn't matter what variable I use. So, uh, and what, what's my interval here? Oh, just saying find criticals. That's fine. That's, that's nice. Find criticals. There's a heck of a lot of criticals on a trig curve, right? Uh, so we'll usually say, uh, on 0 to 2 pi. Uh, so I need just the derivative, right? I'm not asking for n, I'm not asking you for to find the absolute min and max for me here. I'm just saying let's find the criticals because that's the hard part of this. So we need a derivative. What's our derivative? Nice. Plus. I like 2 sine theta times cosine, right? The derivative of the inside, yeah? Right, the inside here is, is sine, right? Uh, so what can be factored here is a, a 2 sine theta. I'll take out a negative 2 sine theta. And I get uh, 1 minus cos theta. Double check me, please. So the criticals come from only from f prime of x equals zero gives me two sine of theta, oh, theta, right, equals zero, or one minus cos of theta equals zero. Is everybody okay here? I find the derivative, I factor it, I set the factors equal to zero, right? So the first one is, is pretty easy. Right? When do I get sine equals zero? Yeah, uh, not zero. Oh, yes, there's three places, right? Yeah, theta equals zero, pi, or two pi. And when does cosine of theta equal um, one, right? Zero and two pi, right? So the criticals 
uh, are 0 pi and 2 pi, right? Because two of them repeated, yes? How are we doing? Yep. Yes. So uh, derivative of cosine is my, my plain old simple cosine moves the negative sign, right? So there's that first part. And the other one, it's, it's a lot easier for me to maybe think of sine squared theta as sine squared, sorry, sine all squared. So I can see that the inside is a sine function. So what happens to when I square something, I get two times that something, right, for the derivative, times the derivative of the inside, which is my cosine. Some of these problems, when you're doing these trig criticals, you'll get from factoring. Some you'll have to use quadratic formula, right? So, so keep that in mind. Do, do all of the trig ones. Yes, Daniel? And then one minus cosine theta is... Uh, is cos of theta. And I'm just looking at my cosine graph, right? I just look at my cosine graph. Uh, when, do I, when do I get ones? At here and here, right? So at 0 and 2 pi. It's a nice way to, if I, like if I didn't give you this interval, what would be my criticals? Well, it's 0, pi, 2, pi, 3, pi, 4, pi, 5, pi, isn't it? So it's k pi, right? Oops, k pi. Minus 1 pi, minus 2 pi, minus 3 pi. Any value, any integer value of k would be a critical for this function on any interval, right? Remember doing that in pre-cal? You had uh, uh, theta equals pi over 6 plus 2k pi. Do you remember all of that? Horrible garbage in pre cal class? No? Yes? Sheila, does anybody else know? Yes? Cool, that's it for today. Have, have a great day. If you have questions for me, let me know. If you have homework for me, let me have it. Get me some questions to answer on Wednesday for the review, yes?